viruses by Carla, Lexi, and Jackie. What are viruses? Viruses are microscopic parasites, generally smaller than bacteria, that lack the capacity to live and reproduce outside of a host body. They are considered to be the biggest danger to our species and are also the most abundant microbes on Earth. They have been around ever since cells have been around on Earth. Viruses are also known to cause a variety of different diseases, and those diseases may even lead to death. Is a virus a living thing? Viruses are not living things. Instead, viruses are complex groupings of molecules that can be purified into crystals. Viruses cannot do anything unless they enter a living cell. When viruses enter a cell, they will then be able to multiply. Fusion of the virus membrane within a cell membrane, either at the cell surface or from within the endocytic pathway, allows the virus access to the cytoplasm and initiates the infection. Viruses also do not go through metabolism or cell respiration. Virus structure. To start off, you should know that all viruses are made up of some genetic material, whether it be DNA or RNA, but cannot be made up of both. Every virus has a capsid, which is made up of capsomers, and a nucleocapsid. Some have envelopes, meaning it has a cover, and others are naked, meaning it has no cover. Some examples of envelope viruses are influenza and HIV. There are two main shapes a virus can have, but some viruses have a mix of both. Virus structure continued. There are three virus structures, helical, icosahedral, and complex. Helical structures form a hollow rigid rod with cappers on the outside and nucleic acid genomes on the inside. The longer the rod, the longer the genome. Ecosahedral structures have the most efficient arrangement of capsomers in a closed shell. The shape of the virus usually depends on the orientation of the capsomers. And last but not least, there is a complex structure in which the head of the virus is ecosahedral and the tail is helical. Three diagrams depicting each structure are located at the bottom right of your screen. There are three types of viruses, animal, plant, and bacterial. Animal viruses are viruses that infect man and animal cells that possess the genetic material RNA and DNA. Some examples of animal viruses include rabies, mumps, Ebola, the flu, and a common cold. Plant viruses are viruses that infect plants whose genetic material is RNA. Some examples of plant viruses are tobacco, are the tobacco mosaic virus, potato virus, and the beet yellow virus. Bacterial viruses are viruses that infect bacteria and contain DNA as their genetic material. Typically, they will only attack one species of bacteria. DNA versus RNA viruses. What is the difference? First of all, you should know that all viruses are made up of some genetic makeup, whether it be DNA or RNA, but cannot be made up of both. DNA viruses are double-stranded, they have ecosahedral symmetry, and their replication occurs in the nucleus of the host. RNA viruses, on the other hand, are single-stranded, they have helical symmetry, and the replication occurs in the cytoplasm of the host. In this diagram, you can see both a virus with DNA enclosed and a virus with RNA enclosed. If you look carefully, you can also see other aforementioned characteristics of viruses. For example, you can see a complex virus, a capsid, a virus with a helical structure, and much more. Take a look for yourself and attempt to identify other characteristics viruses have. Virus replication. The first step of the replication cycle is absorption. This is when a virus attaches itself to the host by binding its spikes to the cell receptors. After that, penetration and uncoating occur simultaneously. Synthesis occurs next. During synthesis, protein production occurs. The cell synthesizes basic components of new viruses like capsomers and spikes. After that, assembly occurs and the nucleocapsid is formed.
Finally, release occurs. The envelope virus is put off the membrane, which could be labeled as exocytosis, and infect other cells. If the virus is naked, it just slices before the release. Viruses invade normal living cells and use them to produce viruses like themselves. They then kill, damage, and change one's healthy cells into cells that, ca that can cause a person to become sick. Um, symptoms of viral infections include coughing, fever, vomiting, and fatigue, but if one's immune system can fight off a virus, then there will be no visible symptoms. How to detect animal viral infections. One way to detect animal virus infections is through symptoms the patient might display. For example, if a patient has influenza, some symptoms they could display is a fever, fatigue, congestion, and nausea. Also, if something is a virus, there is a presence of antigens. Antigens are a toxin or other foreign substance which induces an immune response in the body. Another way of detecting a virus is through the application of viral DNA using polymers chain reactions. Polymers chain reactions can be used for many practical applications, but for viruses, it can be used to detect if the pathogen is present. Then, if the pathogen is present, it may be possible to amplify regions of its DNA from a blood or tissue sample. Cell culturing is also helpful in detecting a virus. During a cell culturing, if the cell shows changes, such as cytopathic effects, then the cell culture is positive. Screening tests, which are done by taking a blood sample, look for specific antibodies that would display if someone was infected by a virus such as HIV. Many different things can cause viruses such as contact with infected people or animals such as fleas or ticks, or contact with contaminated surfaces. And in some cases, People don't even know that they're infected because their immune system fights off the disease before any symptoms show. But when symptoms do show, antiviral medications can help ease the symptoms and help um, cure the virus. But if there are no symptoms, the virus will go away with time and will no more. Scientific advancements in virus prevention. The most common medical way for prevention against viruses is through the use of vaccines. Vaccines are a weakened version of the virus injected into the patient. The vaccine functions to expose the immune system to the virus so that the virus can create antibodies to fight off the same virus in the future. A person is not guaranteed to never get that virus again because if the virus enters the body as a different strain than what the vaccine strain was, the new strain can attack the body. One new advancement in vaccines is the Zika virus vaccine. The Zika virus can be passed to humans through a mosquito bite. Researchers on this vaccine are making advancements in the hope that when the new vaccine is released, it will prevent infection of pregnant women and the result of congenital effects on the unborn child. Another advancement in virus vaccines is the new polio oral vaccine. Polio is a very debilitating disease and virologists working on this vaccine hope that this vaccine will officially end the outbreaks. This vaccine is called the NOPV2, and as testing continues to be conducted, scientists are seeing better results each time.